amazing. That I think is a great word for this person who will now be, this is amazing too. See, that's why I use the word amazing. 25th anniversary of when she debuted with WWE. It's Lillian Garcia, who is a Jill of all trades. She can do the ring announcing. She could sing. She could be a global ambassador. There is just so much. A smart woman who graduated from the University of South Carolina, the original <laughs> USC. That's right. Thank you, Lillian Garcia. 25 years. Wow. <laughs> what's what's it been like during that time? Because you're with WWE, did some work with PFL. You've done so many other things. But when you think about that, I believe it was August 23rd. Am I getting the date right? Where you debuted. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that show, that event that night and debuting. Oh, my God. <laughs> you ready for this? Because if you haven't heard this story, it's kind of crazy. First of all, thank you for having me on. I always love to talk to you. You have the most amazing, and I'm going to use the word amazing, energy and uh, just your enthusiasm for, for everything. And not only for the sport, but the people that you interview. I appreciate you. So, yeah, that night was crazy because it was my very first day on, on the job. I didn't necessarily know what I was hired to do in my interviews. I had done like mock-up backstage interviews. So I thought maybe that's what I was going to do, but it wasn't until three 30 that afternoon that they, they dropped the ball on me and told me that I was going to be replacing the legend Howard Finkel with zero training on, on, on Monday night raw in the attitude era with 14 million people watching at home and a sold out crowd of like 20,000 people. No pressure, no pressure whatsoever. Lillian, where was it that night? In Iowa. Oh my gosh, you got the Midwestern, the Midwestern contingent there and all. <laughs> what was it like? How were you received that night then, especially by the fans there? And were, do you remember, were there any Howard Finkel chants at that time? There weren't any Howard Finkel chants. I think this is it, right? We're so shocked. Like, what is happening, right? Um, I don't think anybody knew that I was going to be replacing. I'm sure they probably thought, is, is Howard sick? You know, there was the only people that knew anything was when uh, King on air said that I was the brand new ring announcer. But to the arena, nobody knew what was going on because nobody announced me like I was taking over Howard Finkel. And I'm actually glad. Because I think they would have instantly booed me, <laughs> you know, because, I mean, we all love Howard, right? And then I was horrible at my job because I had zero training. And then 20 minutes before going live, they also told me, by the way, uh, those cue cards you've been writing, you can't take those up with you. So, man, James, I don't even know how I got through that. I really don't. It says it's something, I think, like the wrestlers themselves, any athlete, any performer, entertainer, I think the adrenaline sometimes then takes over. So if you could handle that, it's more or less you're not even thinking about all the one particular thing. It's just everything's going and it's super. I would think it, everything went at super fast speed that night. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. And the thing was that of all nights, because I know now how to compare it. That night I'm thinking, is this normal? Because that night everything kept switching. The match, the order, like I would memorize everything right before going on every single match. I would just sit there in my seat and I'm like memorizing, okay, this person and then this person and then this is their, their town and then this is their weight. And then I didn't know any, any stats on the guys because I used to watch as a kid, but then I fell out of it when I went to college. So I had no clue also, yeah, I never really paid attention to the ring announcers, I never paid attention to Howard. So I didn't know the cadence of saying the town and the weight and what kind of match is it? All right, what are the rules to the match? You know, the following contest scheduled for one fall. I didn't even know that. Um, so, so I'm telling you, it was crazy that night that everything got switched around and it was such a blur. I, I kept begging for more time in order to be able to study more before I had to go to the next match. Lillian, looking back on it, why do you think they did it that way? I, I think, I don't know that they did it that way. I think it's just one of those things that maybe, you know, I came on the night that everything switched around. 
Uh, I don't think that they were trying to make it harder on me. I think they knew it was hard enough. Me, you know, not knowing anything and being thrown in. I don't think they would ever do that again. Um, just throwing somebody in. I mean, it literally was the attitude era for a reason. Anything went. And I think now, you know, they have NXT, they have the training ground, you know, they, 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 they would never go up to somebody and go, Hey, you want to try this job on national television or should I say international television and that you've never done it. Uh, but I'm grateful. I am so grateful that it happened the way it happened. It, it took me to another level. It showed me what I'm capable of. It gave me the courage to even like moments like 9-11 when they asked me to sing the national anthem, you know, two days after the attacks when I was so emotional. I think that because I was thrown in to my job the very first night and learning that I can get through something like that, I then applied it to 9-11 and going, you got this, you've got this, you've done it before, you've got it, you've got it, you've done it before. So so yeah, I'm grateful. What an awesome night. What an awesome job too when you mentioned 9-11 and then what, what WWE did on their shows. It was just incredible. And we're going to touch Tribute of the Troops a little bit too, which I know is a big thing they do and you've been involved in, which is another awesome thing. But I'm curious that going back, way back to that, Lillian, did you have, you? I know you said you didn't know you were going to be doing this. All of a sudden, here it is. Did you have any inclination, though, of what you were training or going to be prepared to do prior to that night? Like, OK, I'm here with WWE and this is what I think I'm going to be doing or here's what I want to do. Yeah. I mean, in the in the audition, I had done some mock up backstage interviews. And so that's what I thought that I was coming in to do, which I did do on SmackDown. But I didn't know that they were going to make me a ring announcer on Raw on Monday, the first day. First match you announced, ring announcing. Do you remember the first match who it was against? <laughs> I know that I announced Big Show that night. I announced DX that night. I introduced Tess that night. And, but I, and I did, I think I did Triple H's because he won the title that night, which is kind of crazy. Um, but I don't remember the very first one. Do you? I oh, Lillian. There you go, Lillian. I should have done my homework, and I did not. <laughs> I figured well, out. I lived it. Let me remember this. I'll look it up later. I'll look it up later and add it in. <laughs> I was going to say, I lived through it, and I don't even know. So I don't expect you to know. Well, you've done so many. Come on. You've done so many, though. You've done all of And after that, it must have been, like, after that night, then, Lillian, it must have been a piece of cake. After oh, yeah, that, right? it was <laughs> Yeah, piece of cake. Look, I did go home and memorize as much as I possibly could, but it took a while to get a cadence. And you know what's really cool about doing this countdown that I've been doing, thanks to my publicist, Lee Meltzer, who actually was the one that suggested that I do this countdown to the 25, uh, you know, five year of, of my debut. But I did 15 days to represent each year that I was there. And watching the progression of my announcing, even myself, I'm like, wow, that is so cool to see where I started was like, that final week, God damn it, get to a boom, ball. Oh God, it's so bad, <laughs> it's so bad. To then, you know, we're, we're, I mean, I'm still in the 15 days, so we haven't even gotten to the, to the end yet of my final announcement, but I can see the progression, which I think is, it's cool. And I think it's, um, it's a learning lesson for everybody, right? Whenever you get hired onto a job, give yourself grace to learn the job and give yourself the grace to know that you will get better. If you get frustrated at the very beginning, just keep going, keep showing up. That's the main thing, keep showing up. Who at that time was your go-to person that would help you? Or if you had questions or anything like that in those early yeah. days? Howard, Howard Finkel. He was awesome. Him and Tony Chimmel. So Tony Chimmel, uh, you know, he helped me out at that very first day. He told me exactly what to say for each match. But then moving forward, because Tony was more, you know, he was announcing for SmackDown. And so I just saw Howard more. I just kept going to Howard and asking him, hey, can you help me with this? And, you know, he could have been very bitter 
and even set me up to fail. And it was a testament to Howard, to who he was. Um, instead, he set me up to win. He helped me so much. He was, and then we did this whole feud and and uh, you know storyline, which we were laughing in the back when we were doing it. And it was just, yeah, it was so much fun to work with him. It was such a great spirit. And and I'm one and zero thanks to Howard. I'm still undefeated. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and you know what's cool too about all that? Because here I'm thinking with Howard, the iconic and new when he does the new champion and all that, yeah. it's just that's him. I'm curious though with you, were you thinking, oh God, because this is new to you. Right. Oh, I have to do it like that. Or was it like, oh no way, or, or was it even Howard or you already knew? I need to put my own stamp on it. That's Howard's way of doing it. I need to do my own. Or did or did you have to learn that or be told, no, 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 do your own thing. Let's let's work with you. So I think it's actually a blessing that they didn't tell me that I was going to be ring announcing that night or that was going to be my new position. Because I think had I known that, knowing me, the studious side of me, I would have gone to tape and I would have been looking at everybody previously. And of course, I really would have only had Howard and Tony to really rely on. And so who knows if I would have come in going, the following contest is get to Can you imagine? Oh God. So Hey, is that was that Howard? Was that Howard? <laughs> A really bad interpretation of it. So can you imagine if I would have shown up like that, right? So it's a blessing I didn't. Um, so it was a gift because right from the get-go, I didn't try to copy anybody. I didn't try to sound like anybody. I was just trying to find my own. I knew what the words were supposed to be. And I was trying to find my own rhythm. And I think that's why I ended up having my own sound because of that. And then that's what I've encouraged other announcers that have come after me. I've, you know, Greg Hamilton, I'll never forget. He asked me, he goes, what, what's one piece of advice? And I'm like, get your own sound, get your own sound, your own cadence. Don't try to imitate somebody else because then you will never be remembered. You're going to continue their voice. Right. So yeah, I, that's, and it's not easy. It's not easy to do, but man, when you do and you get into the flow, it's so fun. Another interesting aspect of it is that you were a woman in a male dominated sport yeah. at the time. Yeah. And <laughs> when you think of when you think of the announcers, Howard Finkel, now I'm going way back, Lillian, to Jimmy Lennon Sr., not Jimmy Lennon Jr., who does a great job too. But even but back in the day, but then you go like Michael Buffer, who yeah. did it with, with some pro wrestling, but also did fights, big fights and all too. And I'm thinking then as a woman. What was that like for you sort of elevating women to this level, to this status? And do you ever think about that? I, I think about that now. It's so wonderful to have been put into a position like that and be the first female to even announce WrestleMania. I, I hold that with such great honor, seriously. Um, and I'll never forget even Michael Buffer. He tweeted out, somebody asked him one time, who's your favorite announcer in wrestling? And he pointed me out. He was like, I think she's doing a phenomenal job. And then I got to meet him actually at an autograph signing. And I just went up to him and I went, wow, Michael, thank you. Getting that stamp of approval from you, I really appreciate it. He goes, no, I really honestly believe that you've done such a great job in this industry and the way you sing the national anthem, he pointed that out too. So it was a really great moment with him. Um, but that was the thing is, is, yeah, I just, I'm so grateful, right? Just grateful to have been placed in that position where other women can come and know that they can really do well at that job and dominate in a male dominated industry. It's curious too, also, because when you're mentioning WWE, mm -hmm. so many athletes and their universe, the fans are unbelievable, but so many athletes, so many celebrities, movie stars, talent. And you're an outstanding and amazing singer. And you were able to do that and sing the national anthem. Before we get to that, though, I'm curious, Lillian, were there any celebrities, and there's been many, I know, but were there any celebrities, athletes that because of WWE, you were able to meet? I mean, you got to meet oh, Michael Buffer later, which is cool. But were there are there some that stand out for you and were like, oh, my gosh, this is so cool. Somebody either talked about me, Michael Buffer, or I met. 
at a show at WWE or somewhere else, and because of your WWE stardom. Yeah, there were a lot of lot of you know entertainers uh, and stars that I got to meet because of the company. It's wild that the first person that pops into my mind, and now I'm trying to remember because he has like three names: Michael Clark Duncan. Is that it? Or Michael That's Duncan? It. Yeah, yes. I think it's it. Oh Michael yeah, the big actor. He was in Scorpion King with The Rock, one of Rock's early movies. First yes. movie, big movie. But <laughs> I think the when I saw him, I also remembered him from. I think the movie was called Green Mile. Yes, it was. It was. Yes. That's a, wow. that's on reruns all the time. It, it's, that, a, it's amazing. That movie, so amazing. So I got to meet him, and he's such a big WWE fan, and we got to talk backstage, and such a teddy bear. He was an incredible, just just, just full of life, right? And just loved what we did in so much respect. Like, when he passed away, I was so sad, because I it was such a loss. Um, but yeah, he sticks out that I was like, wow, that's really cool. But there's so many, so hard to, to say, and especially when we were at the Staples Center, uh, when we were in LA, it was Hollywood city backstage. <laughs> that is so cool. I'll tell you what, Lillian, I think Michael Clark Duncan with his size and his acting abilities and all, he would have been a pretty good WWE superstar. Could you imagine him and Big Show against each other? That would have been so awesome. Yeah. That would have been great. <laughs> hey, Lillian, it's so interesting. Another interesting aspect I thought about was social media. Because today, boom. But this is yeah. 25 years ago. So I'm wondering, do you think it would have been harder back then if the way social media is now? With you, not because later on, I mean, look at what you did. You were outstanding. But just the very beginning. Because the fan, anybody, people, fans, they could be yeah. really cool. Social media, good and bad, to be really cool, but they could be really ruthless too. Yeah, I think it would have been really rough. Now there was, and I can't remember if it was my first year or second year, but there was MySpace. <laughs> so I do remember reading some comments on MySpace where I was like, and I'm out. <laughs> I'm not gonna do this. You know why? Because as humans, we can have 100 people tell us we're great, but one person tell us we're not, and we focus on the one. We focus on the negative. And that would have been me, uh, because I got bullied so badly uh, you know, by, by girls at school that I had such a, I wanted to be accepted so badly that I think I would have really had a hard time had I had social media and people putting me down like that it would have it would have crushed me because i know that i was there as a fan and really wanted to do a great job and it wasn't my fault that it was thrown in i was just seizing the opportunity anything too with it's interesting too because you mentioned bullying lillian were you ever part i think you were but again oh, i'm gonna ask you be a star which wwe still does today the anti-bullying program yeah were you part of that and you must have been great you must have been really Happy to be a part of it and also share your story. I loved being a part of it, going to these schools and speaking to the kids and, you know, helping those kids that were being bullied and also speaking to the bullies, right? So I was able to speak to both sides and it was just beautiful. And from that is where my love of speaking came in. My, you know, seeing the power of being able to inspire others, which is what I'm doing now, right? Now I go to corporations, I go to schools and I speak and I really do share a lot of my stories and trying to help people to elevate, you know, their own levels and get them past their obstacles. If it's bullying or if it's their own overthinking, whatever it is. So that's a passion of mine that started from Be A Star and then still singing as well. And I'm gonna get ready to release some more music. So I'm excited about that. And that's another cool thing. And that's amazing because you were able to parlay your WWE success and also with singing. And yeah. just you have an amazing voice, beautiful voice. And Thank you. you. The national anthem. But then you released your own album in English and Spanish. I remember in Miami. You after a show, even here you are working a raw show, and then afterwards you're like at Specs Music or somewhere at Bayside in Miami, 
and doing like an autograph release signing party. Nice crowd was there. Everybody wanted to meet you, checking out your music and all. You were gracious to everybody. But that's just another aspect of what WWE can do for somebody. Yeah, that and that was the thing is I didn't know if I was gonna be able to do any singing in WWE, but here's here's what happened when I got the offer, when I even got the audition, I told my agent, I'm like, wait, what do you mean? Because I remember at the time it was WWF. And at first I thought it was a wildlife fund. And when he said wrestling, I'm like, wait, what? What are you talking about? What could I be doing in wrestling? And I said, you do know that I am a singer, right? Like He's like, yeah, yeah, but I think this would be cool. And it was his suggestion when he said, just go to the audition, you never know. I really want to say that to people because it, it really helped me. So I'm hoping that this helps somebody else not to be so stuck in your box as to what you think your life should look like. So because I went to the audition and I always do, I always say this prayer. I'm like, God, allow me to do my best. And then if it's meant to be, make it obvious. If it's not meant to be, make it obvious. So when they called me and they said, well, we'd like to try you out for two to three months and you could quit at any time. Well, right then, to me, that was obvious. And it was when I showed up at Iowa State University that I got given the tour backstage, I'm, you know, the arena. And I don't know what happened, but I'm, as I'm looking out in the arena, I went, wow, I feel like I'm going to be able to somehow add singing into this. And it was just so cool that that's exactly what happened. Right. But it would not have happened had I said, nah, this doesn't no, this is going to derail from what I really want to do. Man, sometimes just really just take a chance because what's the worst that could have happened? No, I just said, you know what? This is not for me, but at least I tried. University of South Carolina's own. Always had to get that in. Yes. It, we're going to a couple more questions. I want to wrap this up. And thank you as always for some time. This is always fun. Oh, and I love great. I love your stories. You're doing the big countdown. So you've been doing the countdown on social media. So I'm at, so I'm curious for you, what are some of those big moments for you looking back at your WWE tenure? You mentioned tribute to the troops. I know that is so cool being a part of yeah. that, obviously. But are there things also that just come? You mentioned you against Howard, you against the Fink, <laughs> LG versus the Fink. That was fun. But what are some things that just pop up for you during your countdown memories? Yeah, you know, doing this countdown, I didn't realize, like, I did it as a way to say thank you. I did it as a, you know, when when Lee was suggesting, he's like, the fans would love this. And I'm like, okay, okay, I'll totally do it. But I didn't realize how much it was actually going to help me. I didn't realize how much I had forgotten, you know, what I'd done and what I had accomplished. And I think that that's the thing is that life goes by so fast and we're always chasing the next that we forget to look back. Many times we look back at some of the negative things that have happened in our lives, some of the traumas that have happened in our lives. But I think it's important to look back and go, what are the great things that happened in my life? you know, that I can even continue to build off of. And that's what's happened is like even my own self-esteem because, you know, I went through losing my parents, losing my marriage. I've moved like four or five times in the last like year. It's, it's crazy. And it's been a lot, not going to lie. Emptying my parents' house, you know, that was very stressful, emotional, all of that. Um, so it leaves you so depleted that this countdown has actually been like, I oh, know, this is amazing. Thank you. Like, I, I just, I see the moments like when you're asking the fact that I get to sing three WrestleManias, that I hold the record for singing the most amount of times, you know, it's like today I, I, um, I dropped the, the WrestleMania, the, the, was it WrestleMania 28? It was my third. And you could see the passion that I have for singing. I'm just so excited to not only represent America, but just like, just that the moment, the opportunity I'm being given. And I think that's more than anything is that I just had such a fun time of whether I got to sing for troops or WrestleMania and the announcements that I got to, to make that the, the matches that were so big, right? Watching these athletes that are so, so talented and then um, being involved in so many crazy fun storylines. It just all is 
Wow, what a ride. That's the best way to put it. What a ride. And that ride, by the way, even though not particularly with WWE, the ride continues. Lillian Garcia, she had worked for PFL, which, wow, Lillian, PFL has really been elevating itself. Yeah. They go Bellator now. They they bought Bellator, but they're doing, they were just out here too. So we had a, we had a huge weekend. PFL playoffs at Hard Rock Holly, Hard Rock Hollywood here yeah. in South Florida. And then we had Raw a few nights later in Sunrise at AmeriBank Arena, home of the NHL Stanley Cup champion, Florida Panthers. Have to get that in. And Lillian, so... I, you know, you mentioned so many things, and and I do want to let you go, but touch on this because there's an outstanding ring announcer there. There's many outstanding ring announcers, but Samantha Irvin is doing a tremendous job, and she yeah. comes from a singing background. I yep. don't think she's done too much singing yet with them, but her announcing is just like, oh my gosh, she's just really good. And I'm just curious your thoughts of the ring announcers of today, and and even what Samantha is doing. I love that she's being also given this the reins to just like go, just go, just, you know, if you want to do the big, 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 just go, you know, it's, it's a different era, right? We're in a different era right now. And just like the women are being given the reins to have these tremendous matches, you know, it's the same thing. I feel like a ring announcers are being uh, allowed to just go and do your thing. And, and she's taking it by the reins. And I, I love that. I love that she and I were able to co-announce uh, just a few, what was that, a couple months ago. It was really cool. She's always been very respectful. She just wished me a happy birthday uh, this week and, and just saying to me, she's like literally sending me like, you're my idol. And, and that to me means so much and is so special and also is so humbling. Um, so it's just awesome. And then her and Alicia, Alicia is doing so good too, to have two women, you know, it reminds me when Brandy and I were doing that when I was on Raw and Brandy, you know, briefly was on SmackDown and we got to co-announce WrestleMania. It's such a cool thing to see that WWE allows women to step up like that. And there are so many more questions that we could ask, but we're not going to do that because this is a very busy woman. She has a lot of things going, always has a lot of things going on and all. Uh, but I will end it with, with one out of all my questions, I picking one in particular, Lillian Garcia. I'm not going to go to the one, have you met Steve Spurrier? We'll save that for another time. That's right. Coach Spurrier. Yep. <laughs> University, by the way, Lillian, University of Florida Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, Steve Spurrier, before he ended up being the USC coach. But wait, yep. no, I don't want to go see Spurrier. Look at this. Any good rock stories, Lillian Garcia? Oh my gosh, rock. You know, any time that I got to work with rock was incredible. And the fact that we got to do all those backstage interviews, and he was the reason that I sang the national anthem because he was the one that suggested to me to go to the producers and like, because he, when he found out that I sang, he goes, have you ever done the national anthem? I'm like, yeah, I did it from a graduation. He's like, you know, we always play it at live events. We always play it right before, and it's always instrumental. You should go tell the producers you could do it. And so try it out, because I was going to be doing a live event uh, weekend, because Howard usually did the live event weekends, but that weekend I was going to do it. And um, sure enough, I went in and I told the producers, they're like, let's do it. And I did it every night. And then that Monday I showed up on Raw, and that was it. WWE was like, we're going to have you do it. And from then on you see what happened right um so yeah it was always fun working with rock because he he was really good at like opening doors like making suggestions so that you could grow and elevate yourself so is seven buck productions getting royalties are they getting royalties <laughs> i want to know somebody's got i'm not even getting that. royalties <laughs> every time uh, i sing the national anthem that's like you know pro bono <laughs> uh, Lillian, tell us your social media as we get you out of here. Tell yes. us your social media and, and everything, too. I mean, this is unbelievable. 25-year anniversary of your debut for WWE. So awesome. But I wanted to uh, let everybody know that if anybody wants me to come out and speak at your corporation or a school, you can reach my team at booking at LillianGarcia.com. And Lillian's with one L in the middle. So booking at LillianGarcia.com. And then follow me. Uh, at Lillian Garcia on Instagram and Lillian Garcia official fan page on Facebook. But Instagram is where I'm mostly at. And you can catch this entire journey that I'm spilling out. It's been a lot of work, but it's been very gratifying. 
the amazing Lillian Garcia. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, James. I appreciate you.